The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Para-X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. Mary Mead, everybody, and welcome once again to Stirring the Cauldron. Now, tonight's guest is Brandy Williams, and um, she might easily tie you in knots in a way because she's the author of a new book called Chord Magic, tapping into the power of string, yarn, twists, and knots. Brandy's a high Wiccan priest, uh, priestess, and ceremonial magician who's been practicing and teaching magic for about 25 years. In 1997, she founded the Seattle Pagan Scholars, and she's been serving as its director ever since. And she's also involved with the numerous organiz- the numerous organizations, including <laughs> Ordo Temple Orientis and the Temple of Light and Darkness. And just as a reminder, the Para X chat room is open to anyone, and if you're listening live, please join us. Uh, those in the chat are free to share with comments and um, guest questions. So if you'd like to interact or you just want to hang out and you're not over here, come over to paraxradionetwork.com. Hi, Brandy. Welcome. Oh, thank you, Marla and Mary Meet. I love that. I love that song. Thank you so much for starting with it. I love it, too, although I kind of can't use it anymore because YouTube <laughs> says it's got a copyright thing on it. But um, it's good for here, so <laughs> this is always right. good. And everybody likes it, actually. Um so, so the book, which it fascinates me, and it was really good, um, teaches the reader how to twist chords for a variety of magical purposes, but chord magic might not be known to some people who are listening in. So can you please kind of give us a little background, a little history on the subject and how it's used? Sure. And for history, I had to stop myself from just spending the whole rest of my life uh, researching the history because chord magic is something that everyone around the world does. Every culture, it goes so back, so far back in, in history. We, I think we learned it from the Neanderthals. I'm really, I'm really serious. I've got the receipts. <laughs> so, uh, it's, it's just a wonderful, flexible thing that, uh, that people have, have adopted all over the world. It comes in, I mean, so so many different ways, and I mean, there's so much to it. But what drew you to chord magic to begin with? Well, a number of years ago, a, a dear friend of mine, Rhea Loader, introduced me to the idea of twisting cord. It's a very old technique. This is the way that people used to make rope. Some people in the world still do, where they don't have a mecha- mechanical ways of making rope. And it's a relatively easy thing to do. I love doing it in person. I'm really looking forward to when the world opens again and I can go to festivals and, and conferences and show people in person, because I love to take a big bag of yarn and just put it in the, in the middle of the floor and then show people how to do this and then just let them go and, and figure out what kind of cords they want to make. It's really fun. Um, so, so all it really, all it really, uh, all you really need to do is to to take several strands of cord and twist them together and let it fold it back on itself. And the the moment that that happens, it's just magical. It just goes boop, and it it makes the cord. And so when I when Rhea showed that to me, I was just completely hooked. And I made tons. I made so many cords. I would put them all over my body. I would put them on my hands and on my wrists and my um around my neck and you know where right, right around my waist. So I was like a walking cord magic for a while. <laughs> I like that. But you know, and it's funny that, you know, chord magic goes back so deep and in so many aspects and I don't know why this popped into my head when I was reading the book. When I started reading, the first thing that came to mind was I was thinking um 
about the cat's cradle game that we used to play as kids. Um, and I, to your knowledge, is that just a string game or is there some hidden magical significance to it, do you think? Oh, yes, there definitely is magical significance to the cat's cradle. And I, I used to take um, string and, and work cat's cradle magic with it. I didn't touch it on the book because it's not, it's not my culture and I try to be really sensitive um, and not, not appropriative. So it, it really belongs, um, the, the books really belong more to the Eastern cultures, but it's a great, it's a great point, uh, Marlon. I, I uh, encourage people to go and search that out. Uh, maybe I could, I'll, I'll do a blog post and, and go find some sources for people. I'll do that. Yeah, I mean, it was just, I kept it, you know, when you're kids and you're playing it, you know, all you care about is being able to kind of put it back and forth, give it to somebody and, you know, whatever. But now that I was, you know, older and reading this, I'm thinking, hmm, there may be something more to it than just a game. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I, I, I kind of like that. Thanks for answering that. Um you know, there's so many different types of chords and knot spells out there. Um, some are quite simple. Some are like a simple charm, like a piece of red yarn, like the Kabbalah chord um, for protection. And then, you know, a friend of mine had a hand fasting ceremony. And, oh, my God, she got the most beautiful chord that I've ever seen for the ceremony. Um, so they're, they're made of all kinds of materials. I know you're talking about yarn, and, and that's probably the most common, but um, is there any particular uh, fabric or, or, you know, whatever um, that would be more common than others? Well, anciently, um, the, the natural fibers, wool and linen, uh, were the, the fibers that, that people used in, in the older times. Now uh, you can use any kind of material at all. And it's it's a very interesting question because I, I actually stopped writing this book for a year as I, I came to terms with cloth and the kinds of um, ethical considerations there are around cloth. So mm -hmm. one of the things I say is that you um, you make your own choices. Everybody can make their own decisions. What I do personally, I <laughs> I live I live in a state where I can go to a farmer's market and buy a skein of wool that has the picture of the sheep that gave it. <laughs> you know? so I'm talking to the person. That's so sweet. I'm talking to the person who's who's um, raising the sheep. So I know that the sheep is being um, being cared for and loved, and I love having that in in my cords. So that's what I that's what I make my cords out of. And because you're not making a lot of you're not making a large amount of fabric, uh, it, it's it's affordable to get some, some of the higher end fabrics for just this this one little cord that you're making. So mm -hmm. that's what I recommend to people is to to think about what what choices you're making and then to to use basically whatever calls to you. Um, there, I, I'm in a I'm a knitter and knitters tend to be a little um, I don't know, persnickety <laughs> about yarn. Um, mm -hmm. So for a while there, I was like, wool is the only possible fat fiber. But I started knitting with acrylic and realizing that I could like put it in the washing machine. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. just, acrylic is just fine. And, and I, I kind of dove into where acrylic comes from. Acrylic is, uh, it comes from byproducts of, of wood processing. So it's also coming from a plant material and something that um, that uses something that would otherwise not be used. So I'm, I feel pretty good about using acrylic too. So those are the two I I use most often, um, wool, wool and acrylic. But anyone can is welcome to to use any any fiber at all that speaks to them that speaks to the magic. Mm -hmm. Well, I, and I know it's very um, crazy when you get yarn. I mean, I have a friend that I will not go with her to Joanne's, for example. Because she yeah. goes to that yarn and she's done for an hour, hour and a half, yeah. picking and touching and, and complaining about this brand. And, you know, I mean, I mm, so I, I haven't gotten the fever yet, but she crochets and she, she knits and stuff. So, you know, it would be nice to have something soft or something that didn't fray while you were using it or something. But there's a lot of um, nature things that you can get, like little little twigs and barks you know that you can kind of separate and kind of braid or whatever too right yeah that's right and i i love the the image of walking into the yarn store um and and i because i'm a knitter um we call our yarn collections stash <laughs> and, <laughs> and i i long ago reached the 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 place where my stash exceeds my life expectancy um, so, so I had mm -hmm. to start giving it away. But what I really, what I, if you're a fiber artist or if you're if you're a person who knits or crochets, uh, making cords is a way to use up your stash. So <laughs> I like to tell people this is a way to get get the yarn out there. Well, that's a good idea. And you know, as we're talking, um, I'm thinking about um, like 
hair braids, you know, like people are wearing little skinny braids in their hair. That's that's kind of cording too, isn't it? And especially if they're using beads or, or yarn with along with that. Yes, absolutely. And that's a that's a good idea. I hadn't actually included hair braids in my list of things you could use cords for. But now that you mention it, I, I think I'm going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to go make well, myself a hair cord. Well, it makes sense because, I mean, you know, everybody usually does a little hair cord here and there because it's just kind of nice, a little braid. And, and even those big chunky braids that I can't even fathom how they do it, you know, with six different braid pieces and, and it all looks really good at the end. Um, three for me is enough. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's just, it would kind of, you could put, you could do hair braids, but you could also put a charmed um, cord in the braid too. And then you're walking around with a charm and, you know, you don't have to carry it in your pocket or anything. It's kind of cool. <laughs> it's just there. Um, oh, I got a chat room question right away. Um, she says, I really love the concept of knots and twists, but I'm generally all thumbs when it comes to creating <laughs> things like that. Um, is is that somebody that has to be really, really good at crafting and, and things like that? Or is it just relatively easy once you get the hang of it? It's relatively easy to make a simple cord once you get the hang of it. I have um, videos on my YouTube page, Brandy Williams Author, that demonstrates how to make the cord. It literally only takes a minute to make a cord with the twist technique. So you can you can um, knit and you can crochet, you can make braids like you were talking about. Um, you you can do those kinds of things, and that that's that sort of crafty stuff. But just to make a simple cord, really anybody whose whose hands move can do it. And I say that because my my husband's hands don't move anymore, so I, I just have him hold one end of the cord and I make the cord for him. But if you can if you can move your fingers, you can make a cord. And it's it's kind of like twisting because I was looking at that when again when I was reading the book and then I remember that somebody sent me a whole bunch of um, the red um, Kabbalah cords mm. the bracelets and I thought oh I gotta go look at them see if they're braided or or you know what it was because I haven't looked at them in a while and I opened it up and it it's actually to me and I'm not very good in this but it just looks like a piece of red yarn but it it's not a tight red yarn it kind of opens up a little bit you can kind of maybe mm-hmm. see through it a little bit so that's i guess it maybe at one time was twisted or or not but it just seems very open and and just really easy and um you know then you just tie it around in a little knot and wear it uh, so i mean all these things can be so simple but i bet some of them can be quite complex at all uh, also you know, and it's very interesting that you have looked at the construction of the of the cord, because when I say cord and thread, almost everything that we're using, the yarn, embroidery floss, it's actually several strands together. They've already had a twist in them. So that's mm-hmm. something that I talk about in the book that we take into account. So you almost never find like a single strand because they're so thin. Yeah. Uh, this is very, very interesting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can, you know, if, if you, if you're really um, not, not feeling like you can twist, um, you can take a bulky yarn, right, and just um, and, and cut a length of that and put your intention in it and wear it, wrap it around your wrist or, or wear a, a, a pendant on it or put it in your pocket. So like you say, a single strand can also be a piece of cord magic. Mm-hmm. Well, anything can be magical if we if we do it the right way. So, I mean, that's kind of good. But I just, I think sometimes when I was, before I opened the book, I thought, well, maybe these are going to be really difficult things. You're not going to, you know, you're going to have to braid, you're going to have to twist. I mean, it, it just kind of, without even looking, I thought, oh boy, this is going to be good. <laughs> but but in actuality, yeah, take a snip of yarn and tie a knot in it, you know, wear, put it on your wrist and, and, and do all the magical stuff to it before you do that. And voila, it works. It works really well. So it's, it's not that anybody has to be particularly... Um, I don't know, t- uh, crafty to do that. Anybody can. Hmm. Yeah, one of the one of the things that I really um, I sort of stand for. One of the things I really love is to to make magic accessible to people. It doesn't have to be complicated. You can just know a few things and grab a few materials and make magic. And I'm uh, I, I know that there is another book coming out. Uh, Llewellyn is, has a, a book coming out later this year, which is about fiber magic, which goes more in depth in, into making crafts and using knitting and crocheting 
Um, so, so if people are interested, they can also go investigate that. I, I've forgotten the title. I'm trying to look it up. Um, but so if you, if you, if you get really, you know, if you want to, to be, um, more crafty with the, the course, you can totally do that. But my, my, um, my approach to magic is just to explain it and make it simple and then give people choices and then sort of unleash creativity. Mm hmm. And, and if you let yourself create, I mean, just don't, focus on something that you think you have to do a certain way. If you just kind of let yourself go, things get creative very wonderfully. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, here's one important thing um, for people who are making cords for magic um, is that when the cord has served its purpose, it needs to be unmade and released, doesn't it? Yes, that's right. If you, uh, It's an important thing, I think, as a person who does magic to know how to undo your magic, how to end it when it's over. Uh, and uh, and also to keep track of it, I, I just made a cord at Lamas. So um, I went out to, to my Blackberry patch and I made a cord and then I put it in a, a bag and I labeled it Lamas 2021. So, you know, three years from now, I don't pick this up and go, what is this cord? Um, so that's, <laughs> that's an important thing to, to do, too. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's important to know how to unmake it. With fiber, though, it's it's simple. Um, you, all you really have to do is cut it with the scissors. So then you've un- released the energy, and then you mm. get to figure out what to do with the fiber. What I do, I I take it to Goodwill because Goodwill has this um, recycling where they they take cloth that's no longer able to be used and they put it in the system to made in, to be made into rags. And so that's where I put my um, my spent fiber if it's um if it's just a, a fiber like acrylic or, or wool if it's gold i recycle that i use it myself <laughs> <laughs> yeah gold kind of stands out it looks pretty <laughs> no matter what yeah. if you mix it or stand alone yeah um, i think i just want to mention that um your book is full of how to things not only just words but illustrations as well and there are those who might be listening in that are interested in twists and knots and cords just for decorative purposes, for projects or crafts or even to wear as jewelry. So they can get a lot out of this book as well. Um, but but explain the difference between crafted cords and magical cords. Well, that's a really good distinction. Um, when I was looking for examples of how to explain how to make the twist, it takes a minute to show it, and it takes a lot of words <laughs> to explain it if I can't show it, right, which is why there are so many pictures. I went on YouTube, and I was looking for, for examples, and I found that people teach – humans love teaching each other. That's what YouTube – one of the things YouTube is for. And so I found that people were teaching how to make um, rope. And then also there are crafters who teach each other how to make cords just like the ones I make in order to just hang pendants off of them. So people who make jewelry for a living – um, and and so they they don't really they they do the the work they do the physical thing it's with a different intention so it's with an intention to make something pretty and to help them sell the pendant and help people wear the pendant with the magical cord when we make the cord at the beginning of the process we think about what it is we're making the cord for and who we're making it for and then set that intention and then every design choice that we make feeds into that intention so how many strands I use what the colors are, what direction I twist it, what inclusions I have. Um, all of those things go into the intention of the cord. And then when it's done, it's holding the magic as well as being beautiful. Yeah. I mean, it, it, you know, the more I think about this, the more we're talking about it. Now I remember, and God, I'm so old. But when I was a kid, <laughs> there was all these kids had this kind of, it was like a keychain. But it was all, um, it was tiny, thin plastic bits that were like braided together, maybe seven or eight. And, and um, that was what they put their keys on. And it was kind of a craft that everybody learned how to do, except me. Um, but I just, I remember that because they were all like multicolored and they were all braided and, and, and they were braided in such a way that they created a pattern. And I don't know if anybody oh, that's listening even has a clue of what I'm talking about, but it was something way back then that every kid had to have. You know, like every kid used to have um, a, a turquoise Lindy pen because everybody was writing in turquoise, so you had to have one, right? And the same thing with these keychains. They were just just somehow um, 
knitted together, and, and they were really neat. So I'm bringing back memories of all these things that we didn't think had any magic purpose or anything, or not even, you know, we didn't thinking about cords. It was just like, oh, look, this is cute. Let's have one kind of thing. So yeah, magic yeah. cords is still really popular um, among kids. And now that you're now that you're mentioning it, I kind of remember all of the things I did as a kid. You'd go to the store, and there would be kits. And and we can still find kits in like places like Joanne's that are for kids to make friendship cords and to to make simple like you know looms to make pot holders and that kind of thing. Um, and I'm I'm a sucker for all of those. I just collect them. So anything that makes turns fiber into something that um, that that can carry intention, I love this stuff. Yeah, like those rag rugs that they make. You know, like a kitchen rug from just pieces of old cloth and braiding oh, yeah. them together and stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's things that you just, I didn't even think about any of this until I opened your book, and then all of these things come <laughs> flooding back, which is a really good thing. Um, somebody in chat room said, sewing is making knots. I don't know. Uh, you know, um, it's a way to think about it, actually. Sewing does, um, it, stitching can carry intention. So if you're embroidering something, you can put your intention in it. I know people who do elaborate embroideries that are beautiful, sort of magical talismans. Um, so yeah, I think I think stitching can be be thought of in the same sort of um, vein as any kind of fiber magic or cord magic. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm I'm guessing that if you're using them for magical purposes, whether it's um, material, whatever it is, if you don't like it. Suppose you have it there and you said, well, I'm going to use this up. That's not going to work. You're going to have to like what you're using as the tools, right? That's right. And, and like you said, it can really, um, it can really be addictive <laughs> to, to go into a, a fiber store and, and work with the tools because they're, they're just so – they call, right? Uh, the, the colors are so vibrant and many stores um, line them up in like rainbows. Here's all the yellows. Here's all the reds. And then also the textures are so different. And some of them are so soft. And some of them mm-hmm. have this really um, lovely lanolin, like the wools that that, um, that come from sheep, have this wonderful scent and, and wonderful feel. So, yeah, you can definitely get tactile with it. And I, it's something I think five, five, all, all fiber people, people who work with fiber, really love the feel of the, the material. Yeah, I, I think it, it's true that you, you really do need to love the material in order to make magic with it. And if you were going to make something like something really rough, magician-wise, I mean, to just um, something that really needed to be done, a hard kind of thing, <laughs> um, you would use a kind of a maybe a leather or or something rough. Um, and then if you want to do something for whatever on the just the opposite end, you're going to get something that's really soft and cushy. And so, yeah, depending on the spell, should depend on what type of um, material you use. Yeah, that's right. I, I took some of my stash <laughs> since I did have so much yarn and I had to move it on. I, I donated it to a group of women who make um, blankets for people in hospitals. And that's a, that's a kind of magic. It's a kind of intent. They're, they're thinking about um, children and old people and people who are ill getting these blankets and then really being comforted by them. And so I, I love that. Um, I love that you can you can take that um, intent and put it into the material, and then and then it's so you know then it's so soft, and then they they really adore it. And then you, as you were saying, hard material. I was thinking about some of the the bracelets I've seen that are made of really hard nylon, um, mm-hmm. and it's very stiff. So that mm-hmm. would definitely, if you wanted to restrain something, that would be something that you could do. Um, although I tend to, I, I'm, I'm afraid I'm one of those people who tends to like be relentlessly positive. <laughs> no, that's fine. But, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's not ever a bad thing. Now, the book is broken down into three parts. You've got Chord Magic Basics, you've got Chord Magic Design, and finally Chord Magic Projects. And you have a few chapters under each section. So you've got a really good chapter on purpose. And that there are five specific areas of practical magic that just about covers it all. And that chapter includes a chord design for each of the five areas, but also... Um, space for creating your own design. So let's talk just a teeny bit about purpose because if you're doing it for magical reasons, um, purpose goes way hand in hand with intent, doesn't it? 
Yes, that's right. It's a good idea to know why you're making a chord. Now, I gave an example just now of making a chord on a particular day. And I did, my intention was basically to capture the energy of the day. So you can you can approach this with a light heart and be kind of whimsical about it, too. But then right now I'm, I'm crafting a chord that I'm using for my husband who, um, who has health issues. And so that's a, a pretty serious intent. So I'm taking my time figuring out what chords I want to use. I'm breaking out the really good Lithuanian hand-dyed, naturally-dyed yarn for this one. Um, and I'm, I'm writing, carefully writing out the intents, um, thinking about how many, how many strands I want to use with it. And when I finish the design, I'm going to go down and make it with him. Oh, that's going to be really good. I mean, there's just so many uses. And, and you know, just like with any spell, if you're not having that strong intention if you're not feeling what you're doing if you're doing it just kind of by rote it's not going to work um and that that's something that people kind of forget well i'm just going to do this spell but you have to put emotion in it whether it's good or strong or bad you know depending on whatever you're up to um intent and purpose is the thing that makes spells work and it'll work really well with the chords is just like with any other spell Yes, I think you're right. Intent, purpose, and emotion. I mean, with the with the emotion of the the llamas cord, I was enjoying the heat of the day and watching the blackberries ripen. And then with my husband, I have the intention of love and of of helping him to to retain his health as long as he can. So those things are are very powerful to to put into any kind of charm. Yeah, I think people realize that we do have a great deal of power if we just believe in ourselves and and do it for the right reasons. I think it works. Um, somebody in the chat just wrote about some lovely Chinese knot art. You think there's magic mm. in that? Oh yes, yeah. There's so much knot. Actually, when I say cord magic, people automatically think that knot magic because knot magic is so popular. Mm-hmm. And definitely, you can get some very elaborate and beautiful um, knots. I I went to I, I I decided to to do two or three knots, and so you'll you'll find in the book that I have descriptions of of the knots and how to make them and, and um, ways to use them what, when you might decide that you're using those specific knots. But this is, this is something that you can get books and books and books describing these, these very, very elaborate knots, right? So um, I, I just did a few, because like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm the, I'm the um, come on in, it's, it's fun, experiment kind of, kind of writer. But you can definitely like drill down and, and explore some of the ways that people have used knots, if, if that's something that calls you. Yeah, well, I'm going to, when we come back from the break, I want to talk about knots a little bit further. But as we're talking now, I remember, okay, here I go again. Um, Girl Scouts, 100 years ago, um, we learned knots. And um, the only one that I could really get very well was called a square knot. And now I'm thinking, do all knots have some kind of, of magic to them? You know, in the way they're tied and everything, that, that, just popped into my head now that maybe that right over left, left over right thing, you know, maybe that's a little hocus pocusy sometimes. <laughs> I don't know, but it, it's um, it, it's good. I mean, there's just like I said, um, there are people now. There's somebody in chat room that's probably worrying about her book budget now because um, this is a really, <laughs> really good book, to be honest. Um, but and and I like the subhead about tapping into the power of string and yarn and twists and knots. And I mean, you don't have to be a witch to tap into power. You, you know, we can all tap into our own power, and that works. And and um, sorry, I just got distracted because the one I just mentioned that's worrying about her book uh, book budget just put a scary face in the chat room, like a grumpy <laughs> face. Um, <laughs> oh, you know, in you, a good you way. Said, you, you've had a really good insight here. I uh, uh, one of I could have said, you know, spells for for string, but I wanted to make this accessible to anyone who wanted to pick it up. And it's really not just about um, I'll tell you how to do this and you go follow the procedure. I really wanted to give people ideas about how to go about it and how to to make our own decisions about what we're going to what, what meanings we're going to assign and intentions. So yeah, tapping into the power—it's our power. Um, and a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of material can unleash an incredible amount of magic. And we all have it in us. And, you know, like I said, don't, you know, some people worry, well, if I do that and it's kind of like magical and maybe it's like a spell, does that make me a witch? 
you know, and, <laughs> and no. I mean, you know, it can if you want it to, but it, no. I mean, you know, you don't get the stamp on your forehead if you do that. I mean, it's just another way of using your own power. And, um, you know, it's it's like people that think they don't do spells every day. Well, you do. You know, you pray for something. If you ask for something or if, if somebody is um, driving too slow in front of you and you're late and you're yelling at them, well, you just cursed them. You just did magic. They don't realize yeah. that. So we're all magical in some ways, some of us more purposefully than others. But we all have the power. We were given that gift and... Um, you know, it's here to be used, and that's why I think this book is so great, because it's for everybody. It's not just, you know, it's it's mainstream, basically, if you want to look at it that way. And it's hard that sometimes we cross into mainstream, you know, sometimes we wish we could, but this is absolutely perfect. So, like I said, when we um, come back from break, I want to talk about knots, because, um, you know, they just aren't just a shoelace annoyance. So, um, everybody, don't get your knickers in a knot. We'll be back in about two minutes. Don't go away. There's more Stirring the Cauldron with Marla Brooks, right after these important messages. Hey, everyone. It's Marla. If you like tonight's episode of Stirring the Cauldron and the Archive Podcast as well, take a look at the show's YouTube channel and check out the dozens of shows that are there just waiting to be heard. New shows are added each week, and while you're there, why not subscribe? It's free. And if you click on that tiny little bell icon at the top of the page, you'll be notified when new shows are available. Just go to YouTube.com and then type in Stirring the Cauldron Pair X and the link will appear. Just like magic. Hi, I'm Kimberly Juarez with Cat Paranormal of Minnesota. Hi, I'm Willow Layman's son, psychic medium, Dark Nola Paranormal, New Orleans. And I'm Jerry Ayers with Supernatural Investigators of Minnesota. And together, we are The Calling. Every Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, only on ParaXRadioNetwork.com. Welcome back to Stirring the Cauldron. Once again, here's your host, Marla Brooks. Okay, my guest tonight is Brandy Williams, and we're talking about cord magic. And before I mentioned um, that we're going to the break, I want to talk about knots. Um, So you can't make a knot without a cord or material of some kind. So a knot... So knot magic is part of cord magic, but there's a major difference between the two as far as magical workings, right? Well, you know, I think that you're right, that every knot needs a cord. And so thinking about what the material is that you're going to make the knot in is the first part of of making a, a knot magic. But a lot of people, when I say cord magic, they immediately think about knot magic and they think about the nine knot spell. And so that's the one that <laughs> almost almost all witches know. Um, oh, and because um, because it was uh, Ray Buckland made that that spell. Um, mm-hmm. He I, I and I'm a Llewellyn writer. They gave me permission to reproduce it, so it's it's in the book as well. Yes. So I was very yes. excited. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I've talked about the witch's ladder here and there, um, and so it's kind of familiar to people, but um, it's just kind of, um, well, okay, let me get to this other question, then I'll keep it with mine. Not yet. <laughs> um, she said, there's a craft called, oh, and I'm, gonna, I'm not going to pronounce it right, Kyutu, where you put the, sh- the shed dog or cat fur into miniature animals, and she's oh. wondering if that's fabric magic. Would, be, would it be considered fabric magic? Oh, I think I definitely think it's fiber magic. Anytime you you take uh, something and put it into something else like that, and people do that, um, they they will knit with their their cat's hair or their dog's hair. Um, it's a it's a way to make a bond with your your animal. It's, and so I I think it's a, a lovely area to explore. 
Yeah. And another question. Um, how about sailors' knots, she asks. Did they also use them to ward off storms and troubles at sea? Yes, and what sailors used to do is to um, to knot, make knots when there was wind and then take the cord with them out to sea and then when they needed wind to open the the knot, to unknot the knot, to, to bring a, a rain or bring a bring a wind. And I, I do that with rain. I do that with um, all, all kinds of weather, actually. I will go out in an eclipse or in a rainstorm and make knots. And then when I want that, that magic in whatever I'm doing, I can uh, open the knot to in, unleash that magic. And it's, yeah, sailor's knots are some of the oldest magics that we've got. Wow. This is this is getting more interesting as we go. Uh, <laughs> all right, I'm an so, out geek. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. That's good because I, I, I want to hear this all. Um, knots move energy. They contain energy. Um, they store energy. And I don't know why, but in my head, knot magic might be more powerful because somehow I see a knot being tighter or having more strength than maybe a cord or a twist and maybe I'm wrong um, and maybe maybe also because knots when you get something knotted that you don't want knotted it's almost hell to undo you know so yeah. I mean it's that tight so am I I'm kind of off base here are knots um because fabric and, and I mean cords also hold energy and store energy and all that stuff. So and move it. So I don't know why I'm, I'm thinking that knots might be even stronger. You know, knots are a very very strong magic. But when you think about it, the cord as you're twisting it, it is a kind of knot. You are making that um, you're making that turn. You're turning that that energy into it. Um, so so I think that they they are powerful in and of themselves. But knots definitely do augment. The, the power of, of whatever you're doing. But they have kind of a specific and pointed purpose. So I think you read you read out the, the list. A knot can restrain something. It can stop something from happening. Or it can, um, like a, with the, the sailor's knot, where you open the knot to, to open a wind, it can release something that's been stored. Um, and I, you said something about the, the witch's, witch's ladder, too. And mm-hmm. I, I said the nine knot spells. A lot of people think that they're the same thing. But they're, they're, there's actually a, a, another way of looking at the witch's ladder, which mm-hmm. I, I wrote in the book and I'm very proud of, <laughs> actually, because I, I went and looked at the, the witch's ladder as it was found in, um, in England, um, mm-hmm. in Somerset. And it was a, it, it's a, a cord with feathers in it. So it, it wasn't really knots, and there weren't nine. There were feathers that were placed in the cord. So I, I gave an instruction for making the witch's ladder and putting feathers in it and how to use it. So so once you've made the cord, you can hang it and then start at the bottom and walk your fingers up the feathers like you're walking up a ladder and then throw your hand up and release the intention. And so that's another way of looking at the witch's ladder. I'm really proud of that one. <laughs> yeah. No, I haven't heard that. that I like that. Um, and And, you know, people are listening, but you have – so many exercises throughout the book and like I said you know many 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 illustrations on how to twist how to knot and all the rest and you also have information on things like um, a rainbow color palette um, or elemental and planetary color palettes let's talk about colors um, and and how they work Colors are so personal. And I wanted to say that you, you said I have many exercises, and I did try to put a lot of material in the book. But you can just pick one and do it. <laughs> You're gonna, you, know, you don't have to feel overwhelmed. You don't have to do every single thing in the book. Just pick one that you like and, and, uh, and get yourself started, right? So, so with color, there are traditional meanings. Um, there are uh, ceremonial meanings for colors. There, there are uh, various witchcraft um, lines have different color meanings for the elements and the planets. And so what I did was I put one example in the book to to get you started and then i just put in a blank template and said look this is red what's red to you red is blood red is life red is power you know that's that's my in, in meanings but y- you can you can decide what it means to you and then once you've made that list you can then use the the color in a court so i'm doing a health cord and health is green for me um so i i'm using a lot of green in my my health co- cords so yeah, okay. And some people would think green was money, but it's what you yep. think it is, right? I mean, you know, right. um, like white could be anything because it kind of blends in with anything. Red, 
love pink, oh, you know, all kinds of things. <laughs> but but it's, it's, I mean, because we do have lists about this color works for this and this color works for that. But you know what? That's kind of a basis thing. But if you see brown as the most beautiful color in the world and, it, and sunshine and lollipops with brown, then you'd go brown. You know, I mean, it's not what somebody else wrote that it is. So I think um, free will and, and creative thought works a great deal. Oh, yeah. Brown will mean something different to a farmer than it will to a cook, right? Because brown is the manure that you're putting in your your um, soil and it's bringing fertility. And then for a cook, the, the term is golden, brown, and delicious. You want you want your, your food to be brown. <laughs> yeah. And, but if you're using it as clothes, it's like, oh, well, that's kind of drab, you know? So so it really depends on the, the context, right? And brown is a great example, too, because brown is, brown is the new orange. It's very hard to find orange anything orange fabric it's very hard to to find meanings for orange basically it's like well there's the one plant there's the one thing we have it's an orange you know <laughs> um so so brown is in the orange family and so i did a lot of work with brown um in in explaining how to how to work with color um, and i do a lot of brown in in my own cord magic yeah i and well to me too cord is just i mean brown is very natural you know it, it's it's bark of a tree it, it's whatever um, and then, you know, like you have a chapter called chords for specific times and places, places and times. And so when you're doing chord magic, I mean, you know, explain to somebody like, suppose they had to make a spell for, uh, attraction. Me, I'm not big on love spells, but attraction will do. Um, <laughs> you know, what? What would you suggest? I mean, what time, what place, what colors kind of thing? I mean, color, I guess, is, like we said, it's personal choice. But, you know, it's very important to know what you're doing when you're doing it and, and thinking it out before you start doing it, right? Yeah, that's right. And I think for attraction, you're th looking at something new, making something to start. So you might do something in dawn or in the morning because that's the beginning of the day. Or you might do something in springtime. And one of the things I love about um, time chords is that I can take a chord and make a springtime chord and then I can wear it in winter when I want to do an attraction ritual uh, or make an attraction chord and then have that energy that I'm putting into the chord. So I have the springtime energy. And so what I did with my llamas chord, I made llamas, my llamas chord on llamas and my cousin couldn't meet on that day. Because, you know, but we often um, have to, to schedule like on weekends or when everybody's off. So when we were able to get together, I wore my llama cord and I had the energy of the day and I brought it into the circle. Mm. See, um, I'm just looking here at something that's really interesting because you have um, in the cord magic kit. Now, tell, let's talk about a cord magic kit. Um, should everybody have a kit or, you know, can you just kind of do it a la carte? It's a, it's a fancy name for um, get a bag and put the stuff you're going to need in it and then take it with you. <laughs> and I just did that with the uh, – I'm using the llama's cord as an example because I just made this. So I've got a, a pretty little rainbow bag. If you go to my Instagram, you'll see a picture of it. And I, I just put in um, the co colors I knew I was going to, to need and an S hook, which is a way to hang on to a cord, and a little scissors. And then I took it out into into the blackberry um, – it's not in, but next to <laughs> the blackberry bushes, um, and and tied tied one end to the the blackberries um, so that I could I could make the cord. So that's all that a kid is. But also, I was thinking about when I travel. Sometimes uh, there was one time I was in, in Minnesota in um, um, St. Paul, Minneapolis, St. Paul, and there was a tremendous thunderstorm. And I said, "Oh, I really want to capture this." And then I was tossing my my luggage for anything that was like like a fiber that I could grab and make a knot in. So I said, you know what? If I had a kit, I could capture exactly what I wanted. So that's why I thought about making a kit. And then there, it, I'm, I'm just thinking about this too: different sizes and shapes of of what you're going to make cords out of. And I just was looking, and I see embroidery floss. Now that's really thin, really, really thin. Yeah. And then you have big clunky things, you know, too. So do, does the size of the material matter, depending on the spell, um, maybe? I, I, have, I have used more embroidery floss than anything else because it comes in so many colors. I got the DMC card that has like 300 different colors on it, and wow. then I kind of picked which one I want. I, there, it's just, you could really geek out on, on the 
the embroidery floss. And the thing is, they're so inexpensive, right? So you can you can afford to get lots and lots of colors. Now, each one of those skeins of yarn is only or the skeins of embroidery floss. They're only going to make one or two cords, but that's all you really need it for. So I, I just love it because I love to experiment with it. Um, I, I tend to stay away from really bulky yarns. I, if I'm knitting something for someone, I might use a bulky yarn. But this cords are things that are going to be on you or on um, or or being carried around. And so being thinner is actually a, a, a advantage for for a cord. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm not familiar with embroidery floss because I just am not. But is it really all right? Com <laughs> compare it to dental floss. Is it thicker, thinner? What? Oh, it's definitely thicker. Each um, and to geek out on the. I'm so sorry, but to geek out on the fiber again. Each embroidery floss um, thread is actually composed of, of six separate strands. Like I said, it's already twisted, so it's already been made thicker. So it's mm -hmm. actually not so thin. And and when people embroider, they'll take it and split it and take one of those tiny, tiny thin threads, you know, and use that to embroider with. So um yeah, so so it's actually not as, as thin as you might you might think it is. So uh, mentioning embroidery now, um is embroidery kind of like um knotting and cording and, and stuff? I mean, because you are kind of sort of knotting when you embroider, right? You're definitely going to have to make a knot at the end when you finish the the stitch. And I think one of the um, one of the listeners who talked in the chat mentioned that that sewing is stitching. I think that's that's definitely true for embroidery that that you're making a line um, in in fabric as you're as you're making the design, and then at the end you're going to you're going to knot it so it doesn't come undone. So that's those are great opportunities to to set intention. You've got a design that you're making. You've got the color of the thread that you're using, the embroidery floss. Um, so you can you can choose the color for the intention, and then when you have finished and you make the knot, you can set that intention. So it's a it's a great way to make a little charm. Well, what about um, crochet? That's sort of naughty, you know. Well, it can be, can it? <laughs> Yeah. Oh yes, C crochet is one long knot. That's what that's what a crochet actually is. <laughs> as as a knitter, I do different things. Knitters knitters have um, different kinds of patterns that they use, and I, I'm hoping Opal Luna. I looked her up. Opal Luna uh, wrote a book called Fiber Magic about uh, y yarn, about crocheting and knitting. So I'm hoping that she'll go into some of what those what those kinds of things can can be used for. But um, you just as you're as you're um, as you're making as a knitter, I learned to crochet. Um, so, something that that was like a continuous um, a continuous cord. Uh, it's called an I cord. Um, that that is a tube. So that's definitely something that's that's like incredibly magical. And and knitters use it as as um, to to put uh, in purses as the string, the drawstring that's going to draw something closed. That kind of thing. It's like an edging. But mm -hmm. it can also just be. I I don't think I did it. Um, I I don't think I put it in the book. I I thought about putting instructions about how to make an I cord in the book, and I thought, yeah, it's a little complicated. <laughs> I'm I'm trying to be really simple, but definitely I I cord would be something really fun to to go and learn uh, to put into your magic. So lots of things are are magical, and we don't know it. You know, everyday things, and and I think that's kind of. Um, Kind of interesting. Now, one thing that we should also mention, because we talked about undoing a spell um, or a cord or a knot, but also um, in the beginning, um, let's talk about blessing and consecrating our materials. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because when you pick up an embroidery floss, you've, you've walked into the store and lots of other people have picked up that embroidery floss. You take it home and then cleanse it with a little bit of water and a little bit of intention to move any energy that other people have put into that cord, you know, into that thread um, away from it. So somebody picked it up and said, oh, I don't like this color and threw it back. That's what you brought home with you. You want to move that piece off so that you can put it's clean and then you can put your own energy into it. And then in consecrating, you can... Um, uh, consecrating is pretty simple. You do the consecration as you're doing the magic, but you can also wave some incense over the fiber and say, I'm using this fiber for magical purposes and sort of uh, lay that sort of sound like base paint and base, base coat, like a paint base coat of magic. <laughs> you mm -hmm. set that already into the, into the fiber. And I'm thinking too, also that you can take the fiber and if you have like scented soaps, like a patchouli soap or a, a rose soap or something, you could put the yarn in that and let it absorb the um, odor 
and and it will take some of the things that the uh, soap not the soap, the smell, the aroma has to do with, um, it can pick it up and that's kind of consecrating itself, isn't it? Yeah. And now that you mention it, I, I thought about, um, using a bowl of water. I did this in uh, practical magic for beginners. I talked about how do you scent when you don't use fire? Cause that's important when you're say working in a hospital, you can't light a candle. There are lots of mm-hmm. places you can't light candles, but you can right. take a bowl of water and you can put a little oil in it. And so you could also use that as a consecration for your fiber. You could put a little drop of rose oil in a, in a cup of water and put your, your fiber in it and overnight, and then it would pick up a little bit of the scent. Yeah. Let's talk about um, stones, um, using stones and, and, and things like jewelry in your cords. Um, how do you pick and choose from that? You want to um, you want to get a stone that has a, a big enough hole that you can you can work with it because it's going to go on the, the fiber in one way or another. Um, so I what I what I do is I I take one of the strands that I'm making into a cord and I put my stones in that and then I twist them into the the twist itself. But you can also just put it uh, if you've got a, a stone that's got a big enough hole, you can use the entire cord and put the the bead on the on the cord. Or you can use a hook and like with a pendant, um, you can you can put a cord through the finding of the pendant and hang something from it. So those are the ways to, to use stones. And I really love doing that. I love I love putting inclusions, pretty sparkly beads and crystals, check check uh, plastic crystals um, to to really uh, spark up the cord. And I've seen people that take um, tumbled stones and then they'll take very, very fine wire and kind of not all around the stones and making jewelry or, or a little pendant or something. So that's kind of the same magic as well. They're using the stone. They're using uh, wire that you can bend and not cut right through your fingers forever. Um, yeah, I mean, there's just so many possibilities out there when we're talking about this. Yeah, you're, you're wildly creative, Marla. <laughs> you're thinking all these great things to do. That's a wonderful idea to to um, look at wire wire work with with beads as a way of making um, of making cord magic. That's lovely. Yeah, well, you can make a cord out of wire, I guess, or or just about anything. I mean, like we mentioned, dental floss, if need be. If it, you know, if you really had to use something, <laughs> you then, have to. <laughs> yeah, or or you know, I, and I bet there are people, maybe dark magicians or something, that will take hair from a brush and make a cord out of that and then use it for their dastardly purposes or or maybe even for a lovely purpose. I don't know. But well, um, that, I, I had a friend who, uh, we're all witches and we're all friends, and she said, can I borrow your, your hairbrush? And I, I handed it to her, and then she she um, pulled my hair out of it and handed it back to me and said, here. <laughs> I said, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the thanks for the, the warning. I, I appreciate it. Uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> right. okay. you have to be careful about that. <laughs> yeah, we do. And and but you know when you're amongst friends, that's one thing. Because I know I was yeah. br- I was brushing the cat earlier. I got this new kind of brush for him, and it it collects all the the hair. And then you push a button, and poof, it pops out. And I thought, mm, there's a way to need knit with this or do something with this, you know, instead of throwing <laughs> it out. I mean, you know, you use it, and it's you know really really cute. Um, You've got a website that has lots of things there. I mean, I mean, there's so much to cover that we can't squeeze everything into one show. But and I think we've kind of covered a lot. Um, we'll talk about your website. Um, where is it? Where can they find it? Because um, you've got books and videos on and your YouTube stuff in there, and you have a blog, and you have a whole lot. So so point them in the right direction. Sure. So if you say Brandy Williams author in your web browser, you can pull up my um, all of all of my outlets, brandywilliamsauthor.com. So that's the website that has a blog, and I do have uh, you know links to my books, lots and lots of rituals, um, and and just lots of information. And then um, my YouTube channel is Brandy Williams author, and you can find it. It links off my um, my web page. And Instagram, I'm on Instagram as Brandy Williams author. I'm on Facebook too, but I, I tend to, I'm focusing on Instagram right now. So I'm not as active on, on Facebook, but you can find me there too as Brandy Williams author. Yeah, you're all over the place. And, and the YouTubes are like kind of show and tell. So people can watch you do things, right? 
because some people can read and look, but sometimes they like to see too, so they know. Oh, that's exactly it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, I I made a video that was an invocation to Hygieia, the goddess of health. And I'm I'm very proud of that video. And I I did for a solid year. I did the invocation to Hygieia to, just for general health. So I, I try to put um I try to put rituals and things that will be helpful to people on the YouTube channel. And then with cord magic, I definitely wanted to show people how to make a twist because it's so much easier to show than it is to explain in words. So I encourage people to go look at it. And it's I, I made them short. They're like a minute. <laughs> So twists basically are just um, exactly what they say. I mean, you know, we think of cords that are braided and everything, but a twist is just you have a piece of yarn and then you just twist that into what you need it for, right? I'm really yeah, dumb about right. this stuff. I'm just asking. <laughs> oh, no, you're not. No, no, no. You're not, not you're not at all. You've been so intelligent and so creative. But it's a it's a new idea to people. We've really lost it. This is a very old thing. But, you know, we, we have now we can go and buy yarn and buy string and uh, and rope. So we've lost how to do it. But it's it's pretty simple. You take basically you want three strands, not not just one. You really kind of want three because you need uh, several of them to, to interact with each other. Um, you anchor one end. You twist it, so you basically turn it in your hand so that it goes twist, 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 and then you fold it back on itself, and it spins against itself, and then you knot the the two ends that have come together, and you have a cord. So that's a verbal description. I've got a longer description in the, the book, but if you go to my YouTube channel, I can de- it demonstrates exactly how to do that. And it really does take like a minute. And it's so much fun because when you fold the, the, to, the yarn back on itself and let it go, it just, boom, it makes this twist. You're like, oh, that was magic. <laughs> to me, it would be because um, my <laughs> twist would probably be a knot that I couldn't get open. Um, <laughs> it just... <laughs> You know, not that I don't have little little faith in me, but you know, I'm I'm not Susan, Susan that your friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not that crafty, so it's just kind of interesting. All right, well, you know, come back sometime, um, and and because um, there's just so much to talk about and so many interesting things, and and it keeps your imagination going, and and I've really enjoyed your book, so thank you for writing it. Thank you so much for having me. And let's thank everybody for listening in tonight because now all those things are going on in their heads and what can they twist and what can they not and what, what, what. This is all good. And um, until next time, everybody, blessed be and merry meet again. Good night. This has been another edition of Stirring the Cauldron with Marla Brooks. Be sure to tune in next week at the same time for another great guest and more fun. Any rebroadcast or other use of this program without permission is strictly prohibited. Copyright 2009. You have been listening to the Para-X Radio Network. 